we have exactly, what, two months before the power tour. So we've got our work cut out for us. What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. So it's another shop night. Uh, we got John over there cleaning up the dog house. Jackson's inside welding some pieces on the wheel well. And we've got some rice for the prairie. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be bending up some uh, C channel to help support the floor and the top of the uh, transmission tunnel so we can make sure that's able to be walked on. So over here at the brake. What are you doing, Spike? I'm tracing out your radius for your panel back here. Yeah? Does it look good? It looks good from this angle. Then I think it's going to be good to go. Oh. Let's take a gander. Take a gander with the camera. Does it look good on camera? It looks great on camera. Okay. Is, it, is it going to ramp up like that in real life? Uh, only if you wanted to. <laughs> I was just asking. Oh, how's it fit on that side? Flip it all upside down. I mean, I think it fits good enough to I think already. you can fill that gap. <laughs> you can fill that gap with weld. What, I don't, what are you going to weld to there? You're just going to burn through. No, but it's like a double panel. In the night update on snail mail, we got our rear floor pan sides broke and then we're just trying to figure out our layout to cut it to get it to fit in there the way we want it. <clears throat> oh, I turned the light off, it's dark in here now. Um, but yeah, it's just gonna come straight up here over the top and then go back to the garage door area and then we'll notch and make a little indentation for the garage door area to go up. I'll do a little trap door so we can access the air ride stuff. So all that stuff will be closed off in a little trunk area, but we'll be able to flip that door up and access it. He's coming along. This is the rear floor pan area. It's gonna go over the top of the notch and the axle. We're gonna cut a door in here somewhere so that we can access the air rod stuff. I have a little flapper there. We'll do another one right here to access the battery. And then another one here for a little storage container. But time to test fit it. Back to fabricating on the rear floor pan. 
Spike's over there grinding my terribly straight cut I made with the nibbler. That's the floor pan. Obviously has a little bit of sag in the middle, but he's cutting that front piece. So I'll get that brought up to level. We're gonna put some braces in everywhere and figure out where our door needs to go. John got banished outside. He's working on our fuel cell mounting location. Go back behind that rib section. It should be flush on that side once this goes back. going to be a matter of marking it and I'm either going to have to crawl underneath or something's going to have to happen. No, I don't make sure that we'll crawl underneath. Um, unless to the floor all the way around it. My knee. That's also my knee. Hey, remember that one time? <laughs> you remember one time you just decided you wanted to draw across my finger? Yeah. Maybe that's a bitch. <laughs> okay. Alright, I, I marked inside and out. I don't know. It probably would be best to cut. Would it be best to cut the inside or maybe just like right down the middle? Okay, are you just gonna weld tight to the fucking thing? Maybe. Why not? We need to figure out how we're going to cut these doors in here too. These flappers access the battery. Yeah. Which I guess wherever the fuck that is going to cut for the battery. Why are you why are you doing the battery on that side? Just. I just did for weight, opposite weight of the driver. I thought that was a neat idea. Okay. So we got plenty of room to come in here and cut this and then cut, you know, get the grinder in there and cut past. So I think we can cut it after it's all done. This one can be cut. Then we just throw it in there and put a couple tacks on it and then we can start working our way off of a level platform. We can roll the brake over here and Make some C channels.
All right, guys, end of the night, and we have had a very productive night. Spike and John and Zach were over, and we've got some things done. So this is going to be our fuel cell lower tray. We're gonna go ahead and weld this piece of angle on here and run up four pieces of, we one on that side also. Daisy's making sure it looks good. But we'll go ahead and run up four pieces of all thread so that we can drop the tank in case of an emergency or any reason that we need to drop the tank easily. Just be four nuts, drop it down. And then also, since the fuel cell hangs roughly an inch and a half, two inches below the frame, I wanna keep it fully protected. So we're gonna go ahead and add some sheet metal to the front of this in case we blow a front tire, nothing whips up, hits the fuel cell because we don't wanna deal with that. So on the inside here on snail mail, um, we are working on the rear floor pan, I guess is what we'll call it, seat. Uh, I originally was kind of thinking that we'd put another pair of buckets similar to that up here, but they won't fit because this thing is so high just because of how far we drop this thing. So this will probably just end up being the seat if somebody wants to ride in the back. You know, hold on for dear life. Good luck. And then back here, we're gonna have this area will be closed off and we'll have a door that kind of comes up here at an angle cuts across and then comes back at another angle and then when that opens up we'll be able to access all the air ride stuff and we'll be able to access the airbag so if we ever have an issue with the airbags blowing out on the side of the road or blowing out just any time in general it's not going to be a major pain in the arse to get to the airbag so this is where we're at with it this is this is looking pretty good actually um it was pretty tough getting here, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking right now at this point in the evening. So, that being said, we have exactly, what, two months before the power tour. So, we've got our work cut out for us. This thing has got probably two or three more nights of just hammer away on that rear area to make sure all that stuff lines up and works right and we can get that sealed up with the frame in the airbag area before this thing comes off of the frame and the frame gets fully welded because a lot of this stuff is just tack welded in and we tack welded it just to make sure that the wheels fit right and the wheel well opening we didn't want to burn it all home while we were doing that. So, yeah, I think that what we're gonna end up doing is spinning this thing around because I want to put the frame all together, motor, transmission, everything, and it just roll the frame right back underneath it. That's my goal anyway. But I don't think we can do that just because of height restrictions. Oh yeah, did I mention we built this monstrosity of a four by four slash two by six slash um, chain hoist to lift the body up off the frame so we can roll the frame out. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin this thing around, roll it back in, lift the body off, and then we'll bring the frame over here so we can do all our final welding, do all the final welding inside the body, paint anything we need to do inside the body, get all that shit wrapped up, and then roll the frame back under with the motor and everything in it so that's where we're at for tonight hopefully tomorrow night we can get a lot more done on that rear floor pan area that's the goal so we'll see you tomorrow night daisy what do you think that good huh all right we'll see you guys tomorrow night